Some health facilities in the western region are being forced to reschedule the sample taking of contacts traced for confirmed uh, COVID-19 cases due to the non-availability of PPEs for their staff. Eight health workers in the region have so far tested positive for COVID-19. One of them has died. One of the health workers say uh, they will not, some of the health workers, I beg your pardon, say that they will not uh, work if they don't get PPEs to work with. Uh, we'll go live to Kwesiminti Municipal Hospital where my colleague Eric Yawaje is standing by with details. Here at the Kwesiminti Government Hospital, and this point that I'm standing is what we refer to as the pre triage. Essentially, anybody who is visiting the facility will have to come to this point to undergo certain uh, safety protocols before they are allowed entry into the main facility. Now, this is an innovation. They are not using the Veronica bucket, but they've erected a sink and also a hand dryer so that it will promote continuous use. We will not have an issue where there will not be soap, then the tap, the Veronica bucket will be out of water. Now, what we are hearing is that some staff here are saying that they are not going to work. Why? Because they don't have PPEs to work with. We are currently learning that, in fact, they had to reschedule some appointment with some persons that were picked up for contact tracing. So I have with me the medical superintendent for the facility for him to respond to certain questions about some demands that are coming from the staff members. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Live on TV3. Good afternoon. So this is what your staff are saying, that um, because of the non-availability of PPEs, they are not going to work. Oh, that's true, and I think they are right. Isn't it? Each one for himself, and God is for us all. So if they are not provided the PPEs, I think they shouldn't. They shouldn't. But the work should be done. So we are trying to get the PPEs to give to them. But it's not easy. In fact, we've been moving around through people to come and help us. We've also tried getting in touch with suppliers to get it for us. But now you know in Ghana, once they know that you need it so much, the prices are going so high that we can't even afford it. Can you imagine one N95 cost about 30 Ghana? And that one, you can't even reuse it. So it means the moment I remove this one, I have to trade it away. And it's costing 30. So in a day, how many um, N95 will you have to use? A lot. We have to give all the staff who are getting in touch with patients one each a day. So we use it for the whole day. Mm. And we use over 80 to 100 a day, giving it to all staff to work with. So the cost is not easy for us. Currently, what is your stock? Hmm. We have none have now, been. exactly. We have none in stock. We started getting in touch with suppliers to get some of them for us, but still difficult. Some of them will promise you tomorrow we'll bring some, but I'm sure they are also having difficulties getting some to supply. So, so we still don't have anything now. Are we going to get to a point where we'll come to Kwesimitim Government Hospital and nobody will be there to attend to patients? Maybe gradually it's getting there. Gradually it's getting there. The one you are seeing me wearing, I have to recycle it because... Had I, thrown, exactly. Had I thrown it that way yesterday, I wouldn't have gotten any to use for today. So it's recycled. So I'm thinking when it gets to that peak, maybe it will be difficult to work. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Kese, you are the administrator. You were telling me about the fact that you had to reschedule some sample um, taken. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, we had one confirmed case over the weekend. And you know, as the protocol demands, you have a case confirmed, you need to follow up on all the contacts and also ask them to see whether they, they come out positive or negative. So the result of the confirmed case was received over the weekend, that is on Saturday. So we had to do the contact tracing and then test them. But the landlord advised that where the, the confirmed case was living. He advised that because of stigmatization and all the other things, he would want the tenants to come to the hospital and then for their samples to be taken. Uh -huh. So Monday, we started calling them to come. Unfortunately, they came and we had run out of stock for N95 uh, respirators. So Monday, we had to ask them to go and come on Tuesday with the hope that by Tuesday we would have received some from some of the suppliers that we contacted. 
on Tuesday they came and it was the same thing. Uh, so we had to reschedule their screening for today. Fortunately, today we were able to get two boxes from the suppliers. Uh -huh. But we are going to deal with about 50, 50 people of the, as contacts from the confirmed case. And uh, so the two boxes is already gone. gone. That's why my med soup said that as at now, the stock level is nil. But we have been able to deal with the, the contacts of the, the one confirmed case that we have over the weekend. But if we should have cases coming now, suspected ones, it will be difficult to do screening. But don't you rely on the regional medical stores? We have been going there. The, occasionally, the access to come for uh, these PPEs. But I think it, it also depends on what they receive from national. So I think with the onset of COVID, we have been there for about four times. Uh -huh. But the only issue is that what we get from there is woefully inadequate. Uh, sometimes you go and then you have, for instance, the last consignment we went for, we were given one piece, not one box. So. One piece. One piece, right. yes, one. one piece of N95 and then two pieces of Covaro. This is not even sufficient for one patient for a day. Uh, so that is the situation. So what we have been doing is to procure from the open market from other suppliers to supplement what we get from medical stores. Unfortunately, for the past two weeks, it's been so difficult getting from these suppliers. I, for whatever reasons, I do not know. That is what has accounted for the situation we find ourselves in now. When we were getting from the suppliers, we were procuring. Uh -huh. Because for the medical stores one, you can't rely on no 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 you can't rely on that. No, but if you look at our case now, eight health workers have tested positive for COVID uh, 19. One is dead. So your staff are within their right if they say that if they don't get the PPEs, they are not going to work. Yes, it is it is absolutely right. And so we as management need to uh, devise strategies uh, to get these PPEs for them. You cannot put their lives at risk. You can't put their lives at risk. So in the meantime, uh, what are the concrete measures you are putting in place to ensure that tomorrow, tomorrow next, we'll come to a focus meeting and there are no doctors, no nurses, and what have you? We are doing our best. As I said, we are trying to now recycle what is not supposed to be recycled. Hmm. So now a number of staff are using recycled materials. Others are supposed to, or others are using this cloth mask, which is not supposed to be used in a facility, right? So we are doing our best, but we hope something drastic happens so that we don't come to a halt as far as operations are concerned. Okay. Thank you very much. So you heard me speak with some uh, facility managers here at the Efia Kwesimensi Municipal Health um, Hospital. Now, they paint a very grim picture about the fact that um, there's non-availability of PPEs for staff to work. Eric Kiwaje, TV3 News, if you are questioning.